This is a Welcome to Hell show with Johnny Hill. A few weeks ago, I came across a story where Patterson, New Jersey, otherwise nicknamed Patterstein, because of the Sharia law compliant Muslims, the Sharia law compliant Muslims demanded that their children did not have enough dietary food for their diet served in the school cafeteria. So the halal or Sharia law compliant Muslims, I asked a question recently, do the Muslims who argue there isn't enough dietary food in the school cafeteria to meet their child's dietary restrictions know how to pack a school lunch? Because I mean, Going back into kindergarten for myself, I learned how to pack a school lunch, even in first grade or second grade. So the Muslim parents are acting like their own children, allegedly. Allegedly, they don't know how to pack their own school lunch. This is one of many examples that American kids do for themselves. When they ask their parents to go to the grocery store and bring the food requested items home, the child packs their own school lunch then. Like this image on the screen, you got cucumber slices, nectarine chopped up into chunks, strawberry slices, goldfish crackers, baby bell smoked gouda cheese, and goldfish crackers again, and you got whole grain peanut butter crackers. It's one thing, one of the many things that you can take in kindergarten. In kindergarten, like I said, I learned what I love to eat in the category of food. So when my head people bring home the, the items from the grocery store, I would pack it myself but you want the American taxpayers, Sharia halal compliant Muslims, to pay for a pilot halal program in Patterson, New Jersey, and keep it going in Dearborn, Michigan school districts. Because you know you could pack a school lunch like American kids pack a school lunch, you got enough stores, places to go in Dearborn, Michigan that fit your child's dietary restrictions. So there is no reason why the American taxpayers who are non-Muslim also have to pay for the pilot halal food program for your Sharia law restrictions to meet a dietary guideline. Now, if you were going to argue that you were only going to target as Sharia law, halal compliant Muslims, the Muslim American taxpayers living in the school district, that's one thing. But to make the case that you don't want to even pay for it, and you want the non-Muslim American taxpayers to pay for it, why don't you come clean about the non-Muslim tax? That's right. There is a non-Muslim tax that these Sharia law, halal-compliant Muslims believe you should be paying. And... This is one of the ways they're testing the waters. It's not an argument, it's a fact. Because once you adopt the pilot halal food program as American taxpayers, and they say they can't cut strawberries, nectarines, cucumbers, they can't give the kid cheese and crackers, and they can't put the cheese with the plastic knife on the crackers, for a snack. They can't make a sandwich that fits their dietary restrictions. They can't make a salad that fits their dietary restrictions, etc., etc. 
you know that's a bunch of malarkey. But in this non-Muslim tax, they believe they go around and do a collection, many ways like a church, you know, that says, Jesus Christ, he, he demands a donation of monetary value. He needs money, money. Money, not canned food over the holidays. He, he wants money. Jesus Christ in a Christian church. Otherwise, he will necessarily love you. And in many cases, that's what a lot of churches believe. You know, they believe, as I have had been in many churches growing up, where the church would remove you if you didn't make a monetary donation of cash. So in the non-Muslim tax, they go around and they do a collection. Well, you have not converted and worshipped in a mosque at all yet in your lifetimes. We're here to collect a non-Muslim tax. So when it comes to Patterson, New Jersey, and all of the Dearborn, Michigan school district adopting this halal food program in school cafeterias, because they made an argument, they wanted good food, and the only way they feel they're going to get it is if non-Muslim taxpayers pay for it. When they could make their own school lunch, like I learned how to do it going as far back to kindergarten. Other American kids as well. So the bottom line is, they're testing the waters with this non-Muslim tax by having American taxpayers who are clueless or don't want to know at all that once it's adopted, you're actually paying a non-Muslim tax when you're paying for your American tax dollars for a pilot halal food program or any later stage halal food program in America. And at some point, they might make you pay their utility bill. They might make you pay their entire grocery store tab. Oh my God, because that's where it's going to go. Oh, you're a non-Muslim, you're going to buy me gas. I'm a Muslim, you bought me gas. You're not a Muslim, I am. You bought me gas, you bought my kid his food in the school cafeteria. That's halal, meeting the dietary restriction. Paid my grocery store tab and bought my Christmas tree so I could burn it because I'm not a Christian. But I am a halal, Sharia law compliant Muslim. And that's exactly where you're at, Americans. Remember, going back a few years, you had people arguing about Christmas trees and airports. That's where things really got out of hand. Then you put up the Hanukkah candle and the menorah candle in airports with the Christmas tree so the Jewish community was not offended. Now you got Muslims who are saying they're offended no matter what because people are non-Muslims and they're non-compliant to their restrictive diets in America. And we don't need to be paying for all the different cultures of countries around the globe because if we did that, we don't have the space in the school cafeterias nationwide. They should not be a priority when they are a minority. That's the point. The minority should never be a priority when they refuse assimilation in the country they wish to adopt and reside in as refugees, migrants, immigrants. So as much as people want to say that it's hate speech, the reason I bring up this term hate speech, if you move to another country and you don't speak that country's language, you're not doing assimilation. And then when you don't go to another country learning first how to speak another country's language and you're trying to get food, but you can't order food because you don't speak that other country's language, which you should have learned to speak the basics of the language of first before migrating there, you are going to starve in many cases. So no American taxpayer should be restricted or obligated to pay for another culture of people's food and restrictive diet because they refuse, one, to assimilate to the cultures 
the food, the customs of American society. If they refuse to do that, their demands should be ignored. Because when you go as an immigrant refugee migrant to another country, I'm going to say this one more time, you have to assimilate. Part of assimilation is learning the customs, the culture of that country. Learning what foods they eat. The full or partial refusal of assimilation leaves you holding the ball of confusion in your court. Not a ball you can dribble for basketball. Not a ball you can use in football because the same Sharia law, halal, restrictive diet Muslims who want American taxpayers to pay for their pilot halal food programs and later stage halal food programs on a non-Muslim tax as a test in the water. They can't play football either because it's made out of pigskin. The football is made out of pigskin. Don't go around your neighborhood throwing the pigskin football at the Muslims because if they touch it or catch it first before asking, is it made of pigskin? They're easily offended. But we can love the NFL like Tom Brady to President Trump. Just saying as one example. So in closing, you do not have to listen to these Muslim ridiculous demands when they refuse assimilation. If any American citizen goes to the Middle East, any American citizen goes to the Middle East, they have to assimilate to the way people are dressing by clothing. They have to eat a certain way to not easily offend people. They have to go by the changes per country when American citizens visit the countries globally. In the Middle East, people dress differently. But you guys cannot stand out because the culture and customs would offend people. You can't eat certain foods in Muslim territories and countries because people are easily offended. And when it comes to pork products, you're not going to find it in a Sharia no-go zone because that offends the Muslims. And any Muslim who wishes to challenge me on this, in Dearborn, Michigan, there was a butcher shop a few years ago where Muslims were protesting the butcher who owned his own butcher shop. Say that many times fast. He was told to stop butchering the pig and selling ham products to the customers, and he had it there running as a business long before the complaint of the Sharia law halal compliant Muslims demonstrated. Talk about false frustration and fake imitation of life when you're not even willing to assimilate as a migrant or immigrant refugee to the United States. So in closing, one last time, if I learn how to pack a school lunch going back to kindergarten and first grade, there is no reason for American taxpayers who are non-Muslims to pay for the good food or better food as they were demanding in Patterson, New Jersey to match all of the Dearborn, Michigan school district. There is only, we do not need to pay any additional taxes because refugees, migrants, and the Muslim community refused assimilation. They too can pack a school lunch if you did it when you were in kindergarten and first grade. This is the Welcome to Hell Show. Signing off. Gotta go.